So in this fourth demonstration, we're going to work on georeferencing and projections. In particular, we're going to take some scanned images um, of different pieces of maps or satellite imagery. We're going to fit them together and make them conform to the geometry of the Earth. So if you look at the file that you should have downloaded, the demo4 file here, you can see we really only have three things. Um, we have three different JPEG files or digital image files. We have two that are quad sheets um, or pieces of, uh, quad, of one quad sheet for South Bend East. Uh, and then we have one that's an aerial photograph from 1998 of Notre Dame campus. So these are going to be the ones we're working with. If you were to load these up in Photoshop or just double click on them in Windows, you'll see that they are just regular images. There's nothing inherently spatial about them yet. But let's go ahead and add them in. So we'll start a new document, um, our new blank, blank map here. And just like we have in weeks past, we're going to use the Add Data button to bring them in. So we're going to go into Demo 4. And let's start off with just adding these two quad sheets in. First, we're going to take these scanned images and turn them into something that the GIS can work with. And then afterwards, we're going to work with that aerial photograph there. So go ahead and select both of those and hit Add. It's going to build some statistics and histograms in the background. This is just a way that it renders it more quickly. Um, and then it's going to come up with an unknown spatial reference error. This is all right. We haven't told it where it is yet, um, so we expect this. But if you ever see this error with something that you think you have already georeferenced or should already be georeferenced, then you might have a little bit of a problem. So what you see, if you turn them off and on, and remove them around in the table of contents. So we have quad 1 and quad 2. These are pieces of the same image. And what you see actually is that we have a scanned map. This is the bottom half. 2 is the top half. Um, and in fact, um, there should be some, some degree of overlap between them. Um, and this is very frequently what happens when you scan maps, is you get one that doesn't scan perfectly like this, and you want to actually digitally remove this sort of stuff. Um, and we'll be working with that. But the first thing we need to do is we need to make them fit to the real world somehow. Um, so we're going to work with one first, so let's just turn off two for the moment. Uh, and if you notice, if you zoom in on the quarters here, you should see that we have coordinates written on this map. But what we see down in the bottom here is unknown units and something really, really big. Um, these, the map is currently in... Um, latitude and longitude. You can see the coordinates written down here. Um, and what we're seeing down here is, is clearly not latitude and longitude. And in fact, what this is, is it's simply the number of pixels out from the top left corner of the map. So what we want to be able to do is tell the computer first what coordinate system we're going to be putting this map into. And then from there, we want to go ahead and start um, finding tie points or ground control points between this map and the real world coordinates. So the very first thing we want to do is figure out what coordinate system we're working with. Um, and this is almost always written on the maps themselves. In this case, this is the North American datum of 1983. Um, but there's also a North American datum of 1927. And in fact, it's this one is the one we're going to be working with. Um, the 83 is, is on there, but it's sort of these dashed corner ticks. What we want to work with is the, is the, the one that is the actual corners of the map. So I'm just telling you that this is the NAD 1927. Um, so the first thing we want to do is tell, the, tell this map document that that's the coordinate system we're working with. And we do that in the layers set up here. So instead of double clicking on the, on the layer itself, we're going to double click on layers. And if, if you're not on the coordinate system tab, you want to navigate to the coordinate system tab. And then we're going to just simply work our way through these menus here. We're going to go into Geographic Coordinate System. So there's this latitude and longitude. It is not a projected coordinate system yet. North America. And then just scroll down until you get to NAD 1927. And these other ones, just ignore them. Um, it's this, the base one here that we want to work with. So choose that and hit OK. And now we're ready to go. Uh, because if you look down in the corner now, we're seeing decimal degrees. That's not an accurate decimal degree number, so it knows what the coordinate system is, but it doesn't know where they are. 
in fact, something those big, those those numbers that big in a geographic coordinate system would be seven or eight times around the entire Earth. So we want to be able to tell it where the points that we have in common are, the known points. And on that map, on this map, those are going to be the corners here. Now the next thing we want to do is we want to turn on what's called the georeferencing toolbar. Now mine is already up up here. You probably don't see georeferencing anywhere up on your on your toolbars up here. And if you don't, you want to just find a blank space up there, um, sort of in gray, right click, and turn on georeferencing. So I just turned mine off. Now I'm going to turn it back on. Now the way the georeferencing toolbar works is it's pointing at one particular layer. Um, and this is really important, is I, I can only do this for one layer at a time. Now right now it's pointing towards east quad 2. That's not what I want. I want it to be pointing towards east quad 1. So I'm going to change that over to be south bend east quad 1. And nothing changes, but it's, it's now going to work off of the layer that I have visible. So what we want to do now is define ground control points and tell ArcMap where those coordinates are so that it can warp the image to fit onto where it's supposed to. And in fact, the easiest ones for us to use are the corners of the map. Um, so we're going to look at this one first, um, and we're going to use this tool right here, this sort of green and red arrows, um, or, or crosses here. And this is going to allow us to add a ground control point. So we want to click on that, and you see now I have a new little crosshair thing. And I'm going to zoom in quite close onto that corner, and I'm going to run my crosshair right as close over it as I can, click once. So once I've clicked once, you see I have a little green one that's shown up, and if I drag my arrow out, it stays there as well. So this is, this is what I would do if I was tying two images together, and this is what we'll do later on, is we're going to find the same thing in one image and then move it to the other image. In this case, we, our ground control points are actually just coordinates. So what we want to do instead is right-click, and we have the ability to enter an X and Y coordinate if it was projected, or the degrees, minutes, seconds of latitude and longitude. And we're going to choose this one. We're going to choose degrees, minutes, seconds of latitude and longitude. So we have that information written right here. This right here, 41 degrees, 37 minutes, 30 seconds, is our north latitude. This 86 degrees, 15 minutes, 0 seconds, so if there's no seconds, it's, it's inferred to be a 0. Um, that is our west longitude. So we're going to go ahead and fill those in. So in this case, this would be 86, 15, 0. Now this is important. We're in the Western Hemisphere in Indiana, so we're going to choose West. And then we're going to go for 41 degrees, 37 minutes, 30 seconds, North Latitude. Now when I hit OK, the map's going to disappear. That's normal. Because what it's done is it's moved the map to that particular spot. The easiest way to find it at this point is to right click on it in the table of contents, choose zoom to layer. So now we see we have a, a red one because it's moved that location to right there. Um, but the coordinates still don't really make sense. That one is fine there, but it's inferring that one pixel is one decimal degree. So we're actually getting really, really huge numbers as we move across. So we need to be able to set the next coordinate to give it kind of the scale of the image. So I'm just going to zoom in on the other corner over here. I'm going to find my cross point as best I can. Click once, then right click, input DMS of longitude and latitude. And this one is going to be 86 degrees, 7 minutes, 30 seconds, west longitude. So let's fill that in, 86, 7, 30. Again, we need to make sure it's west. And it's our, our north-south, our latitude coordinate, it's, it's guessed at what it thinks it is based on where I clicked. Um, it's, it's a little bit wrong, but at least now it knows it's in the northern hemisphere. So it's getting a little bit better every time. In this case, it's going to be 41 degrees, 
37 minutes, 30 seconds north latitude. So again, once I hit OK, it's going to probably disappear on me. But if I right click on it in the table of contents and zoom to layer. Now if you look in the bottom over here, you see that the coordinates are starting to look like they make a lot more sense. It's not perfect yet. Um, we need one more coordinate to really get it right and then one more after that to test it. Um, but it is getting significantly closer. So let's find another corner on here to put in the coordinates on. So I'm going to zoom in on the top corner. And unfortunately this is where the map cuts off, so I don't actually have a coordinate on the corner like that. So I have to find a different one. And what you want to do is just simply scroll down until you find something that looks like degrees, minutes, seconds. These are some sort of state plane system. We're going to ignore those. But right here, I now see 40 minutes. Well, what does that mean? If I keep going all the way down, if you remember my latitude coordinate on this one was 41 degrees, 37 minutes, 30 seconds north latitude, that next coordinate up there is going to probably be 41 degrees, 40 minutes, 0 seconds. That's exactly what it is. It just does, because it's the edge, because this line is 86 degrees, 7 minutes, 30 seconds um, west longitude, it doesn't repeat that coordinate. Um, it just simply increments this up to whatever the next one would be. So it's actually going to be 42 degrees, 40 minutes, 30, 0 seconds. Um, with the same longitude on there. So I'm going to go back up, find that 40 around the outside there. I'm going to click once on the cross right there. Right click, input DMS. So it's actually done a very good job on the longitude. That is correct. It is 86 degrees, 7 minutes. It's 30, so we're just going to cut off the rest on the west longitude there. And my latitude, if you remember, is 41 degrees, 40 minutes, 0 seconds. So it's going to not move it very much this time. In fact, it's just going to squish it down a little bit. That has to do with the projection and the fact that we're not right on the equator. But it's done a very, very good job of filling that point in. So now we're going to just do our fourth corner just to see how good of a job it does. This is just our double checking here. So I'm going to find that other 40 on the, the west side of the map. It's going to probably guess extremely well on my coordinates, so I'm not going to worry about checking them. I'm going to click once, input DMS. Okay, so in this case it should be probably 86 degrees 15 minutes, 0 seconds west. And that's, that makes sense, it just was a little bit off. 15 minutes, 0 seconds. Um, and 41, 40, 0. So it's just a, a hair off there. And go ahead and hit OK. So it doesn't really move it at all. You can see that there's a little bit of difference between them. Um, but the map in general is now where it's supposed to be. You see my coordinates are moving about what I would expect as I'm moving across um, South Bend, Indiana. Um, and I would say I'm probably ready to check the error um, and then finalize the georeferencing on this image. Now to check the error or to delete a point if I made a mistake in my georeferencing toolbar up here, I would use this link table, view link table. So first I want to look at my error. You can see that all of the residuals here and the total RMS error are all in you know, something to the negative fifth power um, exponentially. So these are really, really, really small numbers. This is good. This is exactly what I want. Um, if you see anything that's much bigger than this, then you probably don't want to do it. Um, if I was very unhappy with that fourth point and I wanted to delete it, um, if I'd made a mistake or something, um, I can always go in here. I can either edit the points, the numbers themselves, if I wanted to fix a mistake, or I could simply delete a point by clicking the point, highlighting it, and then this middle button right here. I'm not going to do it at the moment just because I kind of do like, want all of these points, but that's how you would go back and delete one. Now once you're done, in this case I'm happy with it, it seems like it's where it should be, everything's ready to go. I'm going to choose georeferencing, the drop down for it, and I have a couple of different things here. If I wanted to change my transformation technique to use a higher order polynomial, 
if I had more points, I could do this. Um, I could put either a second or third order polynomial. In this case, I'm not going to. Um, first order and affine is what we want to do. We can either choose to update georeferencing. What this is going to do is it's going to attach something onto that JPEG file that just displays it the way that it should. Um, it knows where it is, it saves it as a separate file, and it's good to go. Um, or I could choose rectify, which creates an entirely new file that has been projected. For, for ease and speed with these, we're going to just work with update georeferencing for now. Let's go ahead and choose update georeferencing. And that's been now made permanent. We now have a permanent version of it. Uh, you see we've lost all of our other options. We're ready to go. So we want to basically repeat the entire process with the second half of the image now. Once they've been put together, it's much easier for us to mosaic them together into one full image of South Bend, of the quad sheet for South Bend. So the very first thing I want to do is choose to switch over in the georeferencing dropdown to South Bend East Quad 2. And then I'm going to turn off 1 and turn on 2. I can't see it yet. I want to right click and go to zoom to layer. So I have the same image. I have pretty much um, a little bit of, of crossover spot. I've got the top two corners of the map and probably some other parts that are in here as well. So I already know the coordinate system is the same. I'm going to zoom in on the top corner here. Now USGS quad sheets are almost always line up correctly with a coordinate on the very northern corners as well as the very southern corners. But northern Indiana, where we are at Notre Dame, we actually hit the edge of the state before we finish this quad sheet. And it actually it ends at the difference between St. Joseph County in Indiana and Berrien County in Michigan. So the corner that we would normally have would be up higher. So this is actually the corner right here. This line right here is 86 degrees, 15 minutes, zero seconds west longitude. And this is 41 degrees, 45 seconds, zero, or 45 minutes, zero seconds north latitude. So if we're right there, and then we click right here, this is our coordinate. So this is our first coordinate. We've done in one click on it. We're going to right click input DMS of longitude and latitude. Again, our longitude is going to be 86 degrees, 15 minutes, 0 seconds west. Our longitude is 41 degrees, 45 minutes, 0 seconds north. Now it's going to move when I hit OK again. Um, in this case, it doesn't disappear just because of where, where it is. Um, but it's still, the coordinates do not line up properly. So I'm going to zoom back out, and I'm going to find the other corner over here. Now the same as before, I want to find where those lines cross over. And this one's going to be 86 degrees, 7 minutes, 30 seconds west longitude, 41 degrees, 45 minutes, 0 seconds north latitude. So I've got my two, clicked once, right click, input DMS. We're going to do 86 degrees, 7, 30, west, and 41, 45, 0, north. So now I want to right click, zoom to layer. It's in the right spot, but we still have a problem with our, our um, we still need a third and a fourth point to really finish it off. So again, I'm going to zoom in. I've got my coordinate up there. I have one right here, too. In this case, um, this is going to be 41 degrees, 42 minutes, 30 seconds. Um, you know that because the other coordinate up here, it just has not repeated the degrees of it um, because it assumes that you know that it's 41. And then my, my sort of west edge of the map is the same coordinate. So I'm going to put my 3, input DMS. Remember it was 86, 15, 0 west. In this case, it's actually 41, 42, 30. So it's just a little bit off there. Hit OK. Just squishes it down a little bit. So I'm going to zoom out a little. We're going to test to that fourth point again over here. Right click, 
input DMS. It's going to guess for me 86, 7, 30, 41, 42, 30. So you can see it's moved just a little bit. There's just a little difference there. So now before I finalize my georeferencing on this one, let's just zoom all the way out, see how they look next to each other. They look pretty good. If we turn both of them on, we can see that they've lined up properly. They fit into the same space correctly. We're ready to go. So I'm going to go ahead and hit georeferencing, update georeferencing again. So now I have my two parts of my map ready to be manipulated into one piece of a map now. So if I put one on top, you can see that one doesn't have that, that black line in it. Um, you're going to want to, for part of the assignment, to zoom in on this border and just see if you see any things that don't line up. And it's, it's common that things will line up maybe a pixel off or so, but if, if you've got roads that just really are super jagged between them, then you might have a problem. So when we're ready to do the mosaic here, um, it's actually pretty simple to do. If your image analysis window is not up the way mine is, um, this is a sort of legacy from our raster demonstration, you're going to go to Windows, Image Analysis to turn it on. Uh, and to mosaic two images together in, in ArcGIS, all we need to do is select both of them in the image analysis window, so in the top part here. Uh, and then our mosaic command um, is going to be this, this right here. Now we have a bunch of options for what we want to do in the dropdown. Um, blend would be, it would mix the two values, it would take an average of the two values of any area that overlaps. Last is going to take the bottom one, first is going to take the top one, minimum, maximum, mean, sum, these are all sort of um, different ways of figuring out what to do with areas that overlap. If you have your number one on top of your number two, well, the number one is the one you want to take, so in this case we would want to use first. So it's going to go for the one that's on first. So choose first, and then you're going to click this mosaic button right here, just right next to where it says first. So it'll run for a second. It's going to look like not a lot happens, but actually what's happened is if we turn off the other layers, we just have this one new mosaic one that's in place there. Now this is a temporary file. This is not saved permanently anywhere yet, so we do want to go ahead and save it permanently. Uh, and then we'll work a little bit, a little bit more on here. So let's go ahead and um, choose it over here in image analysis, the mosaic one, and then it's going to be this button right here saves it permanently. So click that, export. It's going to fill everything in properly for you. Um, do remember that this is one of those situations where it's asking you for the location of the folder separate from the name of the file. So we're going to make sure that this is pointed at the folder for Demo 4. So go into your GIS folder, find Demo 4 data, highlight it like this, don't double click on it, and then hit Add. And I'm going to call this Mosaic South Bend Quad. And I'm just going to slightly change the name. We don't need the, the one anymore in there. And I want to stress that this is in latitude and longitude because we're, the next thing we're going to do is to reproject it, to create a projected image out of this. So we're going to go ahead and hit save. It's going to ask you about this. You could say yes or no. Yes, it'll make the file a little bit larger, um, but there's no real reason not to do it. So now we have something that we've, we've referenced this image to a latitude and longitude system. Um, but what we want to be able to do is convert it into a projected system, particularly convert it into a UTM-based projected system, just like we talked about in the lecture for this, for this module. So this is actually a fairly simple process to do. Um, once it's stopped running here, we're just going to use a command in the Arc Toolbox, um, which is this large number of different tools that we can run. So now that it's saved and we've added it back in, um, we have our Mosaic South Bend East lat long. We don't need the temporary one anymore. We can right click and remove it. Um, and what we're going to do is load up this Arc Toolbox button right here. So go ahead and click on that. Yours may arrive docked. It may arrive sort of floating in space. Um, regardless, what we're looking for in here 
is we want to go into data management, projections and transformations, raster, and project raster. And what this will allow us to do is to take this latitude and longitude image and convert it into a UTM based projected image. So once it's finished running here, um, this is our very standard Arc Toolbox kind of tool thing. We've got our name up here. We can choose the input either in the drop down here or by dragging it over. It should scan through the file and figure out what the input coordinate system is. Um, it is the geographic coordinate system, GCS, North American, 1927. We're going to give it a more intelligent output location than the sort of default. So we're going to send it into um, our demo 4 folder. We're going to call it Mosaic South Bend East UTM. We're going to choose our output coordinate system by clicking on this button right here. We're going to go through projected UTM WGS1984, so we're converting between datums as well. Northern Hemisphere and Indiana is in zone 16 north. If you're doing this for any other image somewhere else in the US or elsewhere in the world, you need to know what UTM zone you're working with first. Um, there's some resources available online to find what that is. So choose OK. And you can see it automatically filled in that geographic transformation for us. So it's going to automatically know what the datum transformation it should use is. So once that's in place, go ahead and hit OK. It's going to create a copy of that image. Um, it's going to run for a minute or two to do that. And we're going to end up with an image that is now georeferenced correctly to real world coordinates and has been reprojected into the UTM, which is the, the, the coordinate system, the datum and projection that we want to use throughout the rest of these modules. So once that project raster tool has finished running, um, you should see the new layer, the Mosaic South Bend East UTM has been added in. It shouldn't really look all that much different to you at the moment. Um, it is still in the same coordinate system in the map document, so it's going to display exactly the same as it would with that geographic coordinate system. But it's innately in the file now that it should be in the UTM zone 16 north projected um, coordinate system. Now this is really important um, for following along with this particular module. At this point, we want to start a new map document so that we're in the correct coordinate system. And this is because the next stage is going to be to georeference that file, um, that aerial image, from one image to another. So go ahead and choose a new map document here. You can save the old one if you want to, if you think you might need to go back a step or two. Um, but when you're ready to, just choose, choose a new blank map document. And then we're going to add back in, and this needs to be the first thing you add back in, that Mosaic South Bend East UTM layer. So now you can see that it's displaying it a little bit different. This is because of the projection. And what you probably notice right away is that this is now in meters down here, and these are really big numbers. This is very indicative of the UTM system. So once we have this in place, we're going to go ahead and add in the last thing we want to do, which is that aerial image, that 1998 aerial image of Notre Dame campus. So hit that and choose Add. It's going to calculate some of the statistics, create a histogram for it, um, all of the things that usually happen when we bring in a, a, an ungeo-referenced raster image. And it's going to, um, when it finally displays, it's going to display off someplace that isn't overlapping. Um, because it doesn't know where it is in space, it's going to stick it down at the equator. Um, and again, it's going to give us this unknown spatial reference. So hit OK. And then we're just going to simply zoom to that layer. So what we want to do is we want to find things in common between this image and the one that we have in from our, our, um, our mosaic uh, quad sheet there. So first thing, make sure that your georeferencing is pointing at the aerial image. You don't want to un-georeference your mosaic UTM image. Um, and let's zoom in on, say, Notre Dame campus, because I imagine we'll probably be able to find things like the Notre Dame Stadium between two different images. 
So we're going to choose Add Control Point. And just go for sort of the very, very center of it. This is not a phenomenal point to use, but it's a, it's a decent enough one to start with. Now this time, instead of just clicking, um, like right clicking and entering coordinates, we don't know the coordinates for that spot. So what we want to do instead is zoom back to the other layer with that, that line still active. So right click on it, go to zoom to layer. And we're going to zoom in. Um, I just happen to know that this is Notre Dame campus around here until we see the stadium and we're going to kind of get it in the middle of it again as it sort of renders here. So it's going to move it to the right spot. Um, and now we just need to find a few other points that are we have in common between them. Now it's if you sort of turn them back off and on, you can see where the things are likely to be. So if you see this intersection right here, that's pretty likely to be that intersection right there. We're getting a little bit better. Um, things are still not lining up perfectly. Um, we do run into a little bit of a problem that the, the lines actually leave the edge of the map. Um, let's look at something kind of down near the river. Now using rivers is a phenomenally bad idea because they tend to move around a lot. Uh, but what doesn't tend to move around nearly so much are bridges associated with rivers. So you see that there's this little on-ramp right here. So I'm going to get where that on-ramp hits the main road. And then that's the same on-ramp right there as it goes right there. So now we've moved things around a lot. They're lining up pretty well. Um, this would be a great time to play around with the, the flicker and swipe tools that we talked about before. So if we wanted to use, say, flicker, or, sorry, that's zoom to raster resolution. If we wanted to use the flicker tool here, We can see that it's flashing back and forth. We can sort of look at particular spots and see what they might look like um, if they line up between the maps. Um, they look to be doing a fairly decent job. I may want to get a third or fourth point in here. Uh, I may even want to remove some of the initial ones that I had. So let's zoom back out and we'll try to find another spot that might be good to use. That looks pretty good there. You can see the actual building footprints. Um, in some cases, things are going to have changed a little bit. But I think we can probably find a fourth point down in here someplace. Yeah, I would say that that spot right there is probably a pretty decent one. So I'm just going to turn off the other one so that I can spot it and come back out. So now I have these lined up fairly well. Um, I'm pretty confident in the points. If I look at my link table again, you can see my RMS error is about, about 10 meters. Uh, that's about as high as you want it to be. Um, if I wanted to, perhaps deleting that first point, that really kind of imprecise one I did in the middle of the football field. Let's see what happens if I do that. Do they look like they still line up fairly well? They do, but let's find another point somewhere on campus so we have this kind of area as well. I'm just going to go back to my swipe tool. See if I can't spot something else in here that I might want to use. This is what the process of georeferencing these images tends to look like. Um, you go back and forth pretty regularly. Um, you're sort of trying to decide what what points to use at any given moment to kind of get it to line up as perfectly as possible. Now actually I'm going to avoid in here because they've, they've actually changed quite a lot of these roads. But I would guess that that point right there probably at least roughly confers to that point right there. Let's see. My RMS error is about the same, so I'm probably about as confident as I can be with this particular image. So when I'm ready to go, I'm going to choose georeferencing. 
I'm going to choose Update Georeferencing. And now my aerial image is georeferenced to the UTM, the WGS1984 UTM Zone 16 North Coordinate System. So what we've gone over in this, in this module is how to reproject or how to georeference a, a scanned image, how to mosaic them together, how to reproject something from one coordinate system into another, and also how to georeference something that doesn't have coordinates already printed on it. So I would work through the assignment for this module. Please don't hesitate to contact me with any questions.